Welcome back to our Channel 6 program for this Wednesday. And of course, yesterday was the regular monthly meeting of United Laguna Hills Mutual. And uh, the gentleman that chaired that meeting has uh, had a chance to catch up a little bit on sleep after another long day of meetings. Ron Beldner back with us, the president of United Mutual. And as the norm, uh, the part the folks see on TV, uh, not quite three hours of, uh, of a live meeting, then it's lunch break and executive session, which can go on. Seven o'clock last night. Uh, okay, so it goes on quite. So what you folks see at home is not even half of the right. time you folks spent here. Um, and you know, that, that brings up a reality question that we really need to address, I think, and we're starting already to think about elections coming up this fall. Staff's already got us scheduled for the Meet the Candidates programs here on Channel 6 coming up in the fall. People can think about running for the board, certainly, but uh, the commitment is, is a significant one. And I think a lot of people maybe think, oh, I'll just have to come to one meeting a month and be on TV for two hours. There's a little more than that involved, a lot more than that involved. When I ran the first time as a director, they told me it was nine to 20 hours a month. Yeah. I'd love to get it below 40 hours a week. Yeah. And it's right now it's been running about 60 because we have every issue, we have to go home and we have to read all these documents. We have the meetings that you see and all the stuff you don't see and that's where the time is taken up. And, and the don't see is the stuff that we really encourage you folks to start attending, which are the committee meetings. And as we know, as we've said, we're just now gearing up for the budget process. You've had the staff presentation right. kind of on the how they're going to do it, but the division directors and department managers are all contributing their input. It's going to go into that uh, staff presentations that will be coming up, and the boards will start very soon uh, working on the budget for 2013. Some of those meetings that we don't televise, you know, the M&C meetings, the Finance Committee meetings, the Landscape Committee meetings, really are where that this basic discussion starts off that ultimately in the fall leads to what people are going to pay in 2013. Right. There's six months of meetings that we have, and the public is asked to come on in. We're spending up to $40 million a year, and it's an embarrassment that when we look out, as we did, for example, recently on one of our meetings, there was nobody in the room except for the board members. And when we had the last budget meeting, we had five people sitting there while we were finalizing the budget and three of those five were board members yeah. that were not on the main committee. Right. So again, the chance for you folks to be involved and be a part of it, it does impact you uh, in your pocketbook and in your wallet next year with the carrying charge being uh, adjusted based on the budget discussions. You obviously open the meeting up with a chance for people to have their say-so, member comments, things that aren't on the agenda. And again, you had several people there representing the group uh, PVP, Protect, Pro Protect uh, Values of Our Property, I guess they're calling it. And they're specifically challenging the board's decision of a few weeks ago to continue the six-month restriction on uh, leasing in United Mutual. Okay. Well, first, let's, people seem to not want to understand the difference between a co-op and a condo. In a co-op, you have no property rights. They're considered an apartment. And the mutual owns all the property. In a condo, like a single family home, you get a title. And under federal and state law, you have that right to do what you wish within that area. In a co-op, federal and state law says no property rights. So when we make the decision, it's being made as the owner of the property. Also, there's a state law that went into effect on January 1. And that law said that if you already had uh, in place restrictions, those restrictions carried over into the new year and became permanent because one of the laws changed said there could be no restrictions on rentals. So this carried over. We don't always make the rules in here. We got the federal government, the state government, they all override anything we have. People will say, well, it's in your bylaws or it's in this law. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, there's others that tell us what to do. And, and we see those changes every year. We see uh, the community here having to make adjustments in the rules mm -hmm. of this community. As you say, based on decisions made at the now the city level, the county level, mm -hmm. the state level, mm -hmm. the federal level. I, I correct myself, it's PPV, Protect Property mm -hmm. Values is the name of the group right. that has been opposing that. They're having a meeting this Thursday uh, in the evening. One of the things that they're suggesting is that you have a, a goodly number of unoccupied units in United, and if you were to change that six-month rule, uh, more people would own those units and then be able to rent them out as a moneymaker 
and you wouldn't have any empty, or as many empty units. Okay, first of all, the co-ops were designed in Laguna of Woods Village under Leisure World was supposed to be 18,000 co-ops. It was supposed to be for active adults living in here, not renting or part-time. Um, we have a number of people who would like to buy in here, investors, and all they want to do is rent until the uh, property values start going up and then they're going to dump on the market all these places which will cause everything to come back down again. Basically, Robin, it may sound uh, a little harsh, but it's nobody's business that there's an empty unit next to you. We have people here, and you know what a sunbird is. They come in in May and they'll stay to October because of hot where they live or in Florida where there's moisture and everything. Or the uh, uh, snowbirds, snowbird, the other side, come in, come in. in Canada and They're Minnesota. Right. Right. Well, I wish I could afford a second vacation home. And now we have a new group moving in here called the golfers. Yep. They're moving in here because the price of $8 for 27 holes or $4 for eight ho nine holes, they could afford to buy a place and not even live here. And when we look at this, our charts of who's living here, we don't see some of these people. So their places stay open. One of the things they said is open units or unoccupied units cause fires and there's floods and pests. The truth is all fires have been in units that have been occupied. Mm. All the flooding that we've ever had has been in units that have been occupied. The problems with pest control have been in units that have been occupied. So, and then we have a within United that people don't know is we also check on these units that are unoccupied. But a lot of them, as we know, are sunbirds, snowbirds, golfers, and other people. Uh, one of my own cul-de-sacs been empty for eight and a half years. Nobody in there, no furniture, but they pay every month. That's their business, not the people next door or anybody else. Everything is maintained. United maintains all of these places, so it's not just being left there. All right. Well, this may continue to be an ongoing discussion, uh, but at least uh, we've gotten uh, the board's input uh, on, on how that decision and uh, what the decision was. And again, you've reflected that uh, at the meeting several times. One of the ongoing areas of discussion is the lighting issue. Um, I know there was a study done, I believe, a year, year and a half ago. Right. Three different um, types were actually installed, people could look at them, the residents picked the one they thought kind of liked the best, uh, more explanation, more investigation, found that um, in the case of what they were looking at was either not UL approved or too expensive. So the board's still gearing up, but it's also gonna take some rewiring, we understand, to install okay. those new lights. Our wiring in this community is 45 years old. Yeah. Wiring has a life expectancy, just like pipes do. And in anything we do, we have to rewire the community. We were down to the bid process. We had the light, everybody liked it, we could afford it, we were gonna do up to eight cul-de-sacs a year uh, so that we didn't have to increase everybody's assessments. And the day we go, we find out it's not UL approved. So right now we're scrambling to find another light that's UL approved that will give us the illumination that we want for all of our walkways. So it's more study. More. More study on that one. The board also is involved in projects, shall we say, outside the realm of United Mutual. You get involved, you have representatives on all of the Golden Rain committees, for example. Right. A new uh, Golden Rain committee is getting started, and that's going to be a, um, a group, an ad hoc committee to oversee the reno renovation at Clubhouse 2. Some changes there, and you made a couple of appointments on that yesterday as well. Yes. Clubhouse 2 has been up for remodeling for about the past eight years. It's past the remodeling stage because they've just been maintaining it. We appointed uh, Jack Bassler and uh, Mary Stone to be on a committee, an ad hoc committee. There's two representatives of each of the mutuals and then there will be advisors to that committee and they will start looking at all the plans. What can we do with that building to improve its look, to improve the quality and what it can offer the community? And I guess one of the requirements is because of the level of construction, they'll have to be uh, ADA compliant. So the restrooms and the access and ingress and all that will be modified to make it uh, better suited to everybody. Right. Our common areas, when they are remodeled, have to be made ADA compliant, as you said. Our mutual homes do not. Mm -hmm. The homes are exempt from ADA requirements. Right. But the common facilities, only when they remodel do they bring them up to date. 
Right. Which brings us to the fact that uh, even though United owns the buildings, individual residents do make modifications and home improvements. And it came, became very clear yesterday that people really need to, first of all, get the permit from United mm -hmm. and the city. And second of all, if you say you're going to put a door or a window or something mm -hmm. somewhere, you need to do that because somebody got in a bit of trouble yesterday for putting a door not where it was originally scheduled to go, and that caused some problems for them. Let me give you an example. We had an 80-year-old lady who came in and asked for a permit to put a patio cover on. Well, after she got the permit from us and from the city, uh, she talked to her contractor, and he says, let's make it an enclosed patio. So they did enclose it. Well, she wanted a heater in there, so she took the heat pump from the living room that she wasn't using and had it put in the walls. Those two things were both illegal. They didn't have a permit to do it, uh, move the heat pump, because it can't go in those walls. They didn't have a permit to do the enclosure. The city, when they did an inspection, said, take it out. Not only did she lose $8,500, but the mutual was fined $1,500 per day until it was taken out. And of course, where does that fine go? Back to the person who owned the place. Wow. So, so the bottom line is uh, play by the rules here on, on all of those uh, issues. You're also going to be uh, beefing up the, uh, shall we say, the recommendations on the recycling, and that's become an important part of the community. Um, you're looking at some ways to help the residents more appropriately know what goes in which bin so that there won't be any problems with uh, mixed, mixed uh, items in the, in the carriage there. Right. We spend this year $326,000 on trash pickup. But what it doesn't include is penalties. When people throw the wrong stuff into the bins, we're charged $25.30 for every bin that has the wrong items in it. If people will put the paper, newspapers, adjust newspapers in the black bin, we get money for that. Last year, that's $10 per manor in United. That's over 68,000. We'd like to double and triple that if people will put the paper just in there. We don't get any money from the red bin or the blue recycled, but people are throwing in contracting materials, they're throwing in old clothing in the wrong bins, they're throwing in hazardous materials, they're throwing TVs in there. I found a couch in one of the bins. I have absolutely no idea how they lifted that thing up and put it in. And as somebody said yesterday, there were TVs, lamps, all the stuff gets thrown in there. And then when it happens, we get billed. And on top of that, lately, where is not picking up? If it's contaminated, they'll put a yellow tag on it. And then we have to go out, start sorting the stuff. And I had a call from a couple neighbors uh, in another cul-de-sac. They went out and actually emptied the blue bin and separated all the stuff. Wow. Well, again, that's going to be uh, some signage and some pictures and some communication is going to improve, hopefully improve that. The uh, meeting gets replayed tomorrow, Thursday. That'll be at 1.30 and again next Wednesday evening at 6 o'clock. And of course, uh, later today or early tomorrow, you'll be able to see this segment again on the uh, community website as well. That's LagunaWoodsVillage.com. Click on Channel 6 and we've got a page now with uh, all the board presidents giving right. their reports. Thank you for joining us. See you back here next month. I appreciate coming out. Good to have you with us. Thank you. We'll be coming right back with more as our program continues for you here on Channel 6. Mm -hmm.